Elon Musk said on Friday that Tesla was close to establishing a presence in Russia and was looking at whether it could open factories there. Addressing an event in Russia via video link, Musk said the company already had production sites in China and the United States, but was looking at opening production facilities in other parts of the world. The Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade invited Musk to Russia. Dear Elon Musk, we were delighted to learn that you are considering building a factory in Russia. By the way, we have a number of state support measures for local OEMs. Come to see us, we'll talk about it, it said on social media in English. Russian small private car maker Zeta is designing an electric car and plans to launch production this year. The auto industry in Russia, a global oil and gas exporter, has no successful electric car projects at present and analysts see slim prospects in the near future, primarily due to poor charging infrastructure. The leader of Russia's space program is desperate to have Elon Musk visit him. On multiple occasions, Dmitry Rogozin has invited the founder of SpaceX to come to Kazakhstan for the October 5th launch of the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft carrying three Russians to the International Space Station. More recently, during an interview on CNN, Rogozin gained a fair amount of publicity when he invited Musk to visit his home in Russia. We respect him as an organizer of the space industry and as an inventor who is not afraid to take risks," Rogozin said. Musk was welcome to be a guest of my family and discuss exploring the universe, extraterrestrial life, and how we can use space to preserve life on Earth. I already set the tea kettle on heat," he added. In a response on Twitter, Musk was noncommittal. It is a fool's errand to try to predict the actions of Elon Musk, but given his understandable security concerns, it's difficult to see the billionaire visiting Rogozin in Russia or attending the launch in Kazakhstan. One might even read an ominous intent in Rogozin's invitation. The Tikital comment recalls the poisoning of Alexander Litvinenko, a former KGB officer who in 2000 fled to the United Kingdom after becoming critical of Vladimir Putin's rise to power. Six years after leaving Russia, Litvinenko was poisoned by drinking tea laced with polonium. He died three weeks later, and Western intelligence services eventually concluded that the poisoning was conducted by Russian agents acting under the approval of Putin. So Musk is probably not going to Russia, and he is probably not going to drink tea with Dmitry Rogozin. But it's nonetheless worthwhile to try to understand Rogozin's motivations for reaching out to Musk in this way. Since becoming head of Roscosmos in 2018, Rogozin has had a passive-aggressive relationship with Musk. Rogozin has responded to SpaceX's success with Bravado and Bluster much of the time, saying the company's engineers are too gentle, or their rockets and spacecraft are not safe enough for Russian cosmonauts to ride upon. At the same time, Rogozin has seen SpaceX largely destroy important revenue streams for Russia's space industry. Most notably, Crew Dragon has cut off the approximately $400 million NASA paid to Roscosmos every year for crew transport services to the International Space Station. Additionally, SpaceX lobbied for a congressional mandate preventing United Launch Alliance from buying RD-180 rocket engines from Russia. Finally, the low-cost Falcon 9 rocket has eroded the commercial launch business for the Russian Proton rocket, a former workhorse that now launches about once a year. So why play nice with Musk now? There are at least two good reasons. First, if Rogozin were to get Musk to actually visit him in Russia, he and the country's space program could bask in his reflective glory. Musk has a deep appreciation for Soviet rocketry. He recently spent an hour visiting with the grandson of Sergei Korolev at SpaceX's headquarters. Musk undoubtedly would say nice things about Russia's space program during such a visit. By meeting with Musk, Rogozin could project himself as an equal. This would be important propaganda for him and Russia's flagging space program. It's likely equally important to Rogozin, if not more so, to attract Musk to the upcoming Soyuz launch. This is because Rogozin and Roscosmos have staked a lot on this flight, which will be commanded by cosmonaut Anton S. H. Kaplarov and carry two other passengers, Yulia Parasild and film director Klim Shipenko. The actress and director will spend about 10 days on board the International Space Station shooting a film called The Challenge. This film project has sparked criticism within the cosmonaut corps in Russia as it has led to a rapid reshuffling of flight schedules, and the budget for the film has come out of the Space Corporation's budget. However, the movie is a high priority for Rogozin, as he is desperate to have something to show in the 60th year after Yuri Gagarin's historic first spaceflight in April 1961. 
The project is needed in order to demonstrate Russian technologies and to draw the attention of the world societies to the jubilee of Yuri Gagarin's flight. Veteran cosmonaut Fyodor Yuichikin said during an interview earlier this year with Novia Gazeta, so it has to be done by April 12, 2022. To Rogozin, making the first feature film in space would represent another historic first for Russia in space, alongside the lines of Gagarin's flight that of Valentina Tereshkova in 1963 and other Soviet exploits in the 1960s. But this doesn't satisfy some people, such as Yuichikin, who see a country reliant on decades-old technology for human spaceflight and promises rather than real projects for the future. We must deal systematically with our space research plans and crew training without changing the script in the middle of the play, Yuchikin said, clearly referring to Rogozin's leadership. If you promise and fail to deliver, have the guts to step aside for someone more worthy and don't go unhinged on them. Demonstrating superiority requires real achievements and victories accomplished in silence. Only then will we give our society the basis in the future to proclaim boldly before the world, space is ours. Musk smiles, boyishly and ruefully. He is relaxing, drinking a cocktail, a Rob Roy, and eating with his usual urgent functionality, with hunger and speed but without relish. Those who love him worry about him, about his health, and they are pleased that he has accepted Taula back into his life. Elon is finding that he has to have a double standard, says Adio Resi. He's always had one standard for himself that he's applied to the rest of the world but it's hard for him to be in a relationship with people who don't measure up to himself. Coming back to Taula, he's realizing he's not going to be able to find a woman who's up there with himself. He's a billionaire, he runs two companies, so he's always been like, his is what I did, why can't you? Because she's human, dude. And the single thing that has made Alon happier most recently is sort of an appreciation of how unique he is and an acceptance that not everyone needs to be equal to him to be in a relationship with him. The central dilemma of his life with Talal O'Reilly, his singularity, and how it applies to the rest of humanity, is also the central dilemma of his life as a serial self-mythologizer, and now the conversation turns to it. He is a rich man trying to inspire a change in national consciousness. It is not enough for him to inspire Americans, he needs somehow to stand for them, to stand for more than himself, if he wants to restore this country's explorer's heart, its willingness to endure risk. He is, after all, talking about people dying in pursuit of his dream, and so he has to find a way to make his dream their own. But suddenly, as his plate is cleared, he appears very alone at the table, as if stuck with the check. It would be a terrible thing if someone died, he says softly and matter-of-factly. A terrible, terrible thing. He looks like a man who has said what has just dawned on him, and so he seems newly cognizant of the possibility of loss. Maybe he even looks like a man in love, but you should know something about him. In 20 years, he plans to ask you to sell everything you own and to give him the $500,000 he figures will be the price of a trip to Mars. Whether such a price is possible or laughable is immaterial. He will ask you to leave everything you own and everything you know. He will ask you to start a colony on a planet that exists as a red star in the night sky. He doesn't want you to come back, but he doesn't want you to die either. For a long time he thought you would have to risk death to accomplish his dream, but now he's decided he doesn't want you to. You don't have to die for Elon Musk. For you to be willing is more than enough. This is all for today folks. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and if you are new, then don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for the future of-